All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the Gym at Orlando Camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakal Kadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, and I want to go into a lesson through the spirit and exhortation, if you will. All right, Lord willing. All right, the Lord is with us. All right. And I want to go into this lesson through the spirit because, again, you know, we deal with the fight in this flesh. All right. And one of uh, Satan's greatest weapons. All right. Is condemnation. All right. And um, the doubt demon. All right. Those two are, are some of the most deadly combinations that that Satan uses concerning the mental battlefield through the spirit. All right. And I want to go into some precepts, some comforting precepts through the spirit, because, again, all right, we are helped. All right. We are not forsaken, regardless of what Esau has coming up down the pipeline, regardless of what people in the world say. We are not forsaken. All right. Our power is fighting on our behalf. All right. We have to maintain that understanding. All right. And again, that even means challenging your own thoughts. All right. Because your flesh is going to attack you in any any way. There is no rules. All right. You have to understand that. All right. So the mental battlefield is one of the most crucial battlefields in this battle through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Oshai. All right. So real quick this is Isaiah 46 and three. And it reads, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to your whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. And even now the Lord is bearing us. All right, he's bearing our, our shortcomings, you know, our pitfalls, our mistakes. All right, and he's bearing it. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. Now, this doesn't give us a license to uh, do as we will. But concerning our sincere mistakes, the Lord is carrying it and bearing it. All right. And his intention is to deliver the elect. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. All right. And the Lord is never going to forsake us. All right. If we believe and we trust in him, the Lord is not going to forsake us, especially when we need him the most. All right. And this may go against the thoughts that you that the flesh may present to you. All right. And that's the deception of the flesh. The flesh will make you think that you're thinking these thoughts. All right. This is why Apostle Gabar says this all the time. The worst enemy in this truth is yourself. It's not the next brother. It's not, you know, anybody else outside of you. It's you. All right. Because you have to deal with the battle in the flesh. Every day you wake up, you have your main enemy. Your main opposition wakes up with you. But we understand that we're not left comfortless and we're not forsaken. That's extremely important, especially in this truth, man. All right. Now, let me get this. I want to get uh, the words of Paul because I thought this was beautiful. Um, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter four. All right. In verse seven, I'll start at six and it reads for you. How about Shemel Shai? who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts and to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh by Shemel Shai and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Yahweh Shai, that the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our body. So right now we're bearing the sufferings, all right? Whether it's a circumstance, whether it's a physical ailment, all right, a thorn in the side, if you will, or the mental battle that comes with um, battle in the flesh, all right? The will of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, and this treasure being in earthen vessels. All right. And the product of, of being in this earthen vessel. All right. Is that Satan is going to send thoughts. 
All right. Satan's going to send um, different tools in his tool shed to, to battle against you. All right. Now, ultimately, those battles make you stronger if ye endure unto the end. And that's the most important part about this battle. But the Lord has never forsaken us, man. Even now. All right. Because eventually all of the nation of Israel are going to receive the mercy of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. But on this side, it's the remnant. And the remnant are not forsaken. All right. The Lord said that he has care for his elect. Now, just because you're not always physically comfortable. All right. It doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't love you. All right. It's, it's actually quite the opposite. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. All right. And sometimes those battles uh, come in different forms, shapes or fashions. But we're never forsaken. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get the words of King David. All right. So let's go to Psalm. This is Psalms 139. And I'll start at seven. And it reads, whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Now, this is how confident King David was in the power of our father. That no matter where he was, the Lord would be present. That hasn't changed. All right. That hasn't changed. But it doesn't mean that the flesh is not going to challenge your faith. And you have to battle that through the spirit and poverty. How about Shemel Shah with these precepts and this understanding that the Lord is never going to forsake us, man. All right. The Lord is always with us. All right. Let me get this one as well. Let's get this in. Uh... Yeah, this is uh, second edge chapter three. And man, this is beautiful. Let me just start at, I'll get it. I'll start at 13. All right. Second edges three and 13. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest and unto him only thou showest thy will and madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. So this is written in the, the marriage, if you will, the vows, if you will. All right. Again, it says promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. And this is how we have an opportunity of mercy. All right. According to the promise that was made to our forefathers. All right. In Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, it talks about the Lord not forsaking the covenant. All right. That he made with our fathers. So even now, the Lord has not forsaken the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And the Lord is with us ever so. Man, let's get this. Let me read this one more time. The Lord is always with us. All right. Lord willing, we're well, part of that number. The Lord is always with us and he's always present. All right. Every situation we find ourselves in, the Lord is present in those situations. And if you understand judgments, you'll look at those situations and understand that there's some wisdom to gather from it. But you're never forsaken. All right. It may feel like that at times, because when you're in Babylon and when you're in the flesh on top of it, they're going to be rough days. All right. But the Lord has never forsaken us. Lord willing, we're part of that number. All right. Again, second edges three and 15 and made an everlasting covenant. All right. Everlasting covenant with him. Promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed and unto him thou gavest Isaac and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. So it shows you how that everlasting covenant. All right. Promising Abraham that thou wouldest never forsake his seed concerning how by Shemel Shai was passed down to Isaac. All right. And Jacob. Not Esau. Esau was put by, meaning he was skipped over. He was he was not accepted. He was rejected. Now, that promise, that everlasting covenant and that promise. Is what we inherit today, Lord willing, we're part of that number. 
that the Lord will never forsake us. All right. And even in this in this place where we've made our bed and we make our bed daily in hell or we wake up and we have to deal with our situations. The Lord has never forsaken us. And he's always mindful of every situation that the hopeful elect are going through. And that's why the importance is enduring into the end. All right. Fighting until the end. All right. Not giving up. And through the spirit and poverty, how about Shai, those battles that you go through become easier to deal with as the Lord strengthens you. But make no mistake about it. We're never forsaken. All right. Through the spirit and poverty, how about Shai. All right. Matter of fact. I want to get this one as well. This is Deuteronomy chapter four, and I will start at. Man, I'm going to start up. I'm going to start at 27. All right. And it reads, and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whither the Lord shall lead you and there ye shall serve gods. The work of men's hands, wood and stone, neither that which neither see, excuse me, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy power, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord, thy power and shalt be obedient unto his voice for the Lord, thy God, Yahweh is a merciful power. All right. A merciful power. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. All right. To have faith in Yahweh is to trust that what he says, he means. For us to even have this truth in itself is a miracle. All right, but when you take it a, a step further through the spirit, you have to understand that the Lord is with you. He didn't just give you the truth and just forsake, uh, forsaking you. All right, he's giving you this truth and he's watching your journey. He's watching the, the steps that you take. All right. He's putting you in certain situations to see what you'll do. That Lord willing. All right. You'll be able to become stronger from it. You'll be refined from it. But it's never meant to completely destroy you if ye endure until the end. This is why this is always reiterated in the scriptures to endure until the end. All right. To keep fighting the good fight of faith. All right. A, a living dog is better than a dead lion, as the scriptures say. And know you're being challenged, though the Lord is giving you the bread of affliction. All right. He has never forsaken us. All right. And this is something that, you know, uh, people like Fauci love to put on on uh, on CNN and Fox News to scare Negroes, Latinos and, and Native Americans and depending on him and the, uh, the, the science of the so-called white man. He tells us what we're vulnerable. That we don't have a defense, that we don't have anybody else to depend on outside of him. And that's what we've been told since we've grown up here. But now that we have the gift of faith through the spirit and poverty, how Shemel Shai, the Lord has renewed our mind. And we have to continue to meditate upon the fact that the Lord has never forsaken us. All right. And we have to continue to keep that faith and maintain that faith, especially in these times. How the Lord delivers you is not important. Believing that he will is the most important part. All right. And as we go into these times, as we continue to uh, a battle through the spirit and poverty, how about Shai, And as times begin to change, we have to understand through the spirit that the Lord has never forsaken us. If you're going through anything, the Lord is, has sanctioned that you go through it. And all things work for good to them that love you. How about Shemel Shai? All right. And that's why endurance. All right. And faith are extremely important, especially in this journey and especially in these times. All right. So I wanted to go into that through the spirit, um, because, again, man, we're not forsaken, man. The Lord is always here, man. He's always present. And it's not just general. Specifically, if you have this truth. All right. The Lord is with you. If you understand this truth and the Lord has allowed you another day to think upon his name, to call upon his name. All right. Then you're still in the fight. That means the Lord is still looking at your actions, at your at your deeds. And, and he's there to deliver you if you're sincere and you continue to do what is required of you. All right. As a matter of fact. 
There's Ecclesiastes chapter 17. I'm going to jump down to verse 17. And it reads from the division of the nations of the whole earth. He said a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion, whom being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline and giving him the light of his love doth not forsake him. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him and his eyes are continually upon their ways. All right. But the scriptures tell us that the Lord gave us all right, the light of his love and he will, he does not forsake us. All right. He's always with us. Lord will and well part of that number. But we just have to continue to fight. All right. And it's just, these are exciting times. But what comes with exciting times? More difficult battles. All right. And through the spirit of Pavi, how about Shemal Shai? All right. The Lord is with us to deliver us. Lord will and we be a part of that number. And that's how we have to look at the things that are coming upon the earth. And that's the faith that we have to maintain. All right. Matter of fact, I'll end it with this. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 5. And it reads, And that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. All right, right now, the world does not value the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. All right? Or... The trust that we have in Yahweh Bashim al Shai. But in that day, it's going to be a crown of glory unto us. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. All right. Isaiah 25 and 9 reads, And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our power. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. All right. Because again, the Lord has not forsaken us. And if you still have this truth through the spirit, you count, you should count yourself blessed. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor and glory. Call Halayim, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah. And a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word. And to the Akwad, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.